Hi everybody and welcome again uh, to my video blog. Um, today I'm just going to give you an update about um, my transition, my life and all that. Um, so as many of you know, um, I've been trying to get hormones by injection for quite a while now. It's been, I think, almost a year since I talked to my doctor about that. and. Um, at first I thought it was going to be easy to get them, but then I did a little bit of research and uh, found out that uh, the main brand, the main commercial brand of uh, injectable estrogen, uh, Dalestrogen, is no longer available here. My pharmacy didn't have it anymore, even though they used to. Um, they didn't have anything else. My doctor wasn't able to find anything. so. Uh, he basically told me, you know, I don't think you're going to have uh, hormones by injection. But I didn't want to give up because they're more effective and they're also safer. Since they don't go through your liver, there's much less risk of uh, liver damage or blood clots than uh, hormone pills. And of course, you know, the effectiveness is an important issue for me because I've been on hormones uh, using pills for quite a while. and. I found the effect to be quite unsatisfactory in my opinion, you know, I didn't really get anything in terms of breast growth. Um, so yeah, that's it. I've been doing research for quite a while and uh, recently I found out there, there was a compounding pharmacy in Montreal that might be able to make them, but I had some trouble uh, with them. I got in contact with them and I got a price estimate of about fifty dollars a month but then when I actually came to the pharmacy um, they told me that the guy I spoke to on the phone one of the two owners was wrong and that it was gonna be a hundred and fifty dollars a month or so and obviously that was way too much I can't possibly afford to pay that for my hormones so uh, well especially since it's only the estrogen there's the anti androgen and all that as well so I did some research trying to find another compounding pharmacy, thinking maybe I can find one that's in the States that could ship to Canada or somewhere else in Canada. And I found one in Toronto that's called uh, Smith's Pharmacy. And they were able to do it for uh, $50 a month. So I called up the local compounding pharmacy and I told them, you know, I'd like to have my prescription back, you know, if if you're not going to be able to make it for a reasonable price, you know, find other pharmacy, you can make it for much cheaper. But in the end, uh, the owner of that pharmacy, you know, just told me, okay, I'm going to make it for $50, you know, I'm not going to let the competition beat me. So, uh, well, that's it. Last week, I got it. I have it here. 10 milliliters of uh, injectable estradiol. Uh, this is estradiol valerate at a concentration of 20 milligrams per milliliters and uh, I will be taking one milliliter a week. I also have some needles, oh, sorry, some syringes, some needles and uh, yeah that's it. Uh, last Friday I went to see my doctor, oh, sorry, I went to see a nurse. This Monday I'm going to see my doctor and the nurse uh, did the injection for the first time. Um, I was expecting it to be quite painful because people had told me, you know, intramuscular injections can, uh, you can get like a burning feeling, it can be uh, pretty, pretty intense. But in the end, I found it less painful than a blood test, so really not much pain at all. There was no problem, there was no, uh, I, was, I was afraid maybe um, it would hurt in the, the following days. I must admit, I felt. Um, a little bit of sensitivity when walking, you know, I could feel um, the injection, but it wasn't painful. And uh, yeah, so basically, it's been uh, fine on that side. Um, in terms of effects, I've been on it for um, almost a week now, and I can already tell you my my nipples are, are much more sensitive. As most of you know, I hope uh, breasts become sensitive when they grow; they're uh, painful to the touch. And I didn't have that on um, on estrogen pills and uh, casodex micro anti-androgen for for months, but now I just took this 
less than a week ago and I can already tell you that there's, there's something happening. So it's good. There, this seems to be much more effective than what I was taking before. On the negative side, um, I seem to feel a little more tired. I've been feeling, in general, less energetic during the last week. I've needed more sleep. Um, but still, I, I think I'm, I'm okay. I've been on uh, on anti-androgens that made me much more tired and, and depressed before. I think it's gonna be manageable, and maybe you know, as my body gets used to this, I won't be uh, so tired anymore. Or if it's really a problem, I could possibly cut the dose in half uh, because I'm taking uh, 20 milligrams a week. I know that some people are taking uh, 10 milligrams, so that could also be doable. Um, yep, yeah, so that's it. I'm, I'm glad I finally got the hormones by injection. It took a really long time. I didn't know if I was ever going to succeed. It was getting quite annoying too because uh, it's pretty easy to get them illegally if you order them on the internet. But I was trying to do it legally and uh, the way things were looking, you know, it, it seemed like I might, I might have had to get them illegally. But uh, I'm glad I got them legally and everything's fine. Um, apart from that, I'm almost done with uh, the last course of my master's degree. So uh, next term, I'm only going to be working on my thesis. I'm not going to have any courses anymore. So that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty well. I think I'm going to get another A in that class, which would mean... Uh, Hopefully I'm gonna have had an A in every single class I took during my master's degree. Um, what else is going on? Um, yes, transition-wise, I um, had a phone interview with uh, Dr. Zukowski, who uh, does facial feminization. Um, he gave me a price estimate of about um, twenty thousand uh, dollars for a bunch of procedures. So there would be uh, jaw work, nose work. Uh, forehead work involved, possibly uh, cheek implants, and uh, Adam's apple shaving, uh, quite a few things, even possibly fat injections here on the side because there's a little bit of a dip here on my temples that uh, he suggested I might want to get filled. Um, I'm not sure yet if I'm going to go with him. I think I'm going to consult uh, the two local surgeons, uh, Dr. Ben Simon and Dr. Um, Brassard, before I make my final decision. <laughs> I gotta say, I felt kind of funny on the phone with this guy because um, it seems he's really trying to... Um, I don't know what he's trying to do, but when he you talk to him on the phone, he's a real charmer and he like compliments you a lot. and. I say, well, he did that to me, but I spoke to uh, Jamie, who has also been with Dr. Zukowski, and she's, uh, she told me basically, uh, he told her the same thing. He told me on the phone, uh, and I quote, there is no doubt that when I'm done with you, you will be uh, stunningly beautiful. And uh, Jamie said he might have used that exact same sentence on her. So I felt a little bit weird uh, in the phone interview, because like there, there were like two messages. At the same time, it seemed like he was trying to, like, flatter me to make me want to get surgery with him but at the same time I really felt like he was uh, really busy and uh, that we had to get going quickly um, but anyways soon I'm supposed to get a letter from them with like a list of uh, the procedures that they're proposing to do and a price estimate uh, so I'll be looking at that and probably calling him again to uh, address the few concerns I might have um, if I'm gonna do this surgery, I, I'm hoping to do it in the summer. According to uh, Dr. Skowski, it would be very possible to do it in like May or June if I wanted to. So I might just do that. Um, one question that's a bit stressful to me is the question of money. Um, so far, I have um, about sixteen thousand dollars on the side. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get much more than that um, by the time of the surgery. And those are Canadian dollars. I don't know what the exchange rate is going to be like. Uh, I know the Klerzakowski offers funding. And my girlfriend is very um, very kind. She's offered to lend me the, the money that I would need. But if the exchange rate uh, drops here if even more, you know, uh, it might become really, really expensive. Like, it, it could cost something like $30,000 if you include uh, 
the travel fees because uh, if I go there, you know, I have no car, my girlfriend has no car, and we would be going together because we can't really go to that sort of thing alone. And uh, just staying there for a week and all the food and the travel and, and the hotel and everything would easily cost you know, two to three thousand dollars. So um, it's gonna be a lot of money, and it's it's a little bit scary, you know, because it's it's um, coming closer. And I'm really starting to think, you know, I'm not gonna be really satisfied with the results, you know, because it would it would suck to get surgery and after that be like, hmm, you know, maybe I could have done this or that instead. So um, gotta have some thinking to do, some decisions to make. Hopefully everything is gonna go well, and I'm gonna be really satisfied with the result. Um, well, it's funny because a lot of people um, have sent me messages, you know, telling me, "Oh, why do you want to get facial feminization surgery? You really don't need that." But you know, I feel <sighs> it's a tough call to make. You know, if you see me on YouTube and you think I'm really feminine, you know, I I can tell you that there's some flaws that you can't see on the camera. Um, I don't necessarily make uh, video blogs and take pictures of me, you know, in the, the moments where I, I look the worst either, you know. But there's some days where I feel I look uh, more masculine than others, unfortunately. And I feel if I want to be able to pass, you know, nearly 100%, there is no way I'm going to be able to do that without facial feminization surgery. Um, and some people will tell you, you know, oh, it's impossible to pass 100%, you know, um, even genetic girls don't pass 100%, yeah, yeah, right, you know, it's like, my girlfriend, you know, I asked her, you know, how, how many times do you get served, you know, and it's apparently very rare, you know, I think maybe she gets called sir once a year or something, genetic girls, you know, they, they don't really get their gender mistaken that often, extremely rarely, and if people, you know, get the wrong people see someone from behind and then they get the wrong, you know, gender assessment, then they're going to revise it as soon as they see that person's face, usually. And I just don't want to transition and have to live, you know, the rest of my life constantly wondering if I'm passing or not. Or, you know, constantly getting sneaky remarks every once in a while because some, some people want to be assholes. I think that facial feminization surgery is very expensive, but it's it's great for two reasons, you know, first of all, it makes you more comfortable, you know, you're happier with the way you look, and also, it gives you peace of mind in the end, you know, because it's, if you get it done with a good surgeon, you know, it's almost a guarantee of passing, and that's really nice. Um, yeah, and some people have also commented that uh, I need to get uh, some, some work done on my voice, I know that, but I really think that facial feminization is more important at this point and also well voice work is something I can do in my spare time for free you know and I can do it whenever I want so uh, it shouldn't keep me from getting you know facial feminization anyways I guess that's gonna be all for today um, for my next video blog I might do a question and answer session again um, a few people have sent me uh, more questions. I think I have like uh, five or six of them. So uh, see you next time people. Bye bye.